going off topic off topic you really off topic right yo you way off topic. how is it that everybody's over here and you way over there off topic <laughs> All right, peace, family. Welcome to Going Off Topic. I'm here today with a very special guest, my brother, Conversations with King. Um, for those of you, if this is your first time on the channel, my name is Brother Omowale. Uh, of course, we are on the Omowale Africa YouTube channel. We are one channel, four streams of content. So every Monday, we have Race, Manhood, and Power, which is immediately followed by live office hours with Professor Omowale. Uh, every Sunday evening at 8 p.m., we have Omowale After Dark. And of course, we have Going Off Topic, which is our flagship brand. Uh, Going Off Topic started as um, just a Black family panel discussion. It morphed into a panel game night. Um, but as of late, we've been curating one-on-one uh, -on -one interviews and panels um, under this particular uh, broadcast. Um, and the whole objective with going off topic is to bring interesting content creators from across the spectrum of social media. <clears throat> Pardon to bring interesting content creators from across the spectrum of social media. So whether it be Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, um, content creators who are doing dope stuff, uh, putting out dope content just to have conversations to push the culture forward, right? So uh, tonight I have my brother conversations with King out of out of Brownsville, brother. Is that where you at? Brownsville, Brooklyn. All right. That's not where um, I'm at. That's where I'm from. That's where I was born, but not where I'm at currently. But okay. definitely my heart, my heart is always there and, and all my philanthropic efforts are there. Okay. Everything I do it goes back to Brownsville. That's love, bro. That's love. So with these conversations, right, what I typically like to do, um, if folks have seen this before, the beginning of the conversation, I like to just take take some time to get to know who I'm speaking with. So who are you as a person? Um, and then on the tail end, we'll kind of like get into a little bit about who you are um, as a content creator. So um, let's just go ahead and get started. Uh, who, who is Conversations with King? Wow. Conver conversation with King is a YouTube channel that was created by a man who never wanted anyone's opinions or truth to be censored. So I created created this page because I I was uh, had an incident with another bigger uh, network and channel, and I felt like I was censored. And I and and being censored is like being buried alive. No one can hear you. No one can feel you. And that's the worst thing you could go through as a man as a woman, just a human being, period. So I create this page for me to get my truth out as well as to help others get their truth out. And it evolved in a short amount of time to be in a page where we have conversations that lead to solutions, solution-based conversations on relationships, social issues, or just issues affecting our community. The crazy thing is that my channel gets really, really spicy, meaning that at times you might have like this ignorance, an abundance of ignorance, and all of a sudden we find our way back to a balance. We call our group the, the True Pill uh, Community Garden, right? Where the women are the flowers and the men are the rocks for the attributes that each uh, property, each flower and rock has. However, we always come back to this homostasis, right? When we come back to this equilibrium where the truth always comes out even though we have harsh conversations. Sometimes it takes the duration of one show and sometimes it might take several shows for us to come back to this solution-based um, uh, conversation. Um, but I'm just so happy I created it because um, my whole life has been about just speaking the truth and, 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 and making sure my community is straight. I am a, a son of two Ghanaian parents who came here for school. They end up staying here and owning property in Brownsville, Brooklyn. If you know about Brownsville, Brooklyn, it's probably the, uh, the most poverty-stricken community in Brooklyn, if not the whole New York City. We have the largest, we have the second largest concentration of public housing. Um, statistics says that 87% of third graders cannot read on grade level. So if you know how they make prisons and you say 87% of graders cannot read on grade level, then you know my, they call my area Brownsville the million, do million dollar blocks because we are like a pipeline to incarceration. Mm. We are a pipeline to Rikers, a pipeline to the to the, every state prison, a pipeline to the feds. We just produce men and women that get incarcerated. Um, and it's sad, but they don't talk about the individuals like myself who were able, or my sister, my siblings, who were able to go to these top tier schools, who are able to become doctors and lawyers. But 
because of that, we have something called the brain drain. And the brain drain is when we lose our most valuable resources in our community. Because individuals like myself or sister, when as soon as we get educated, we get money, we, we're gone. We out. I don't want to deal with this no more. It's too much jealousy, too much hatred, too much self-hate. So we go. And when you do that, the only thing that the younger men and women get to look at is the drug dealers, the gangsters. You know what I mean? So we have to change that. And I think this is why we have to have all these type of conversations. But the way I'm starting to change is through the grace of my father. Um, he was able to start a nonprofit that I, I, I manage right now. And we own property. And we use the entire rental income to give scholarships to kids in our, in our community to go to college. If you live in our community, you don't have an excuse not to go to college. It's particularly CUNY colleges. So we we did this with the um, and we did this because we wanted we, my father actually wanted everyone to have the same opportunities that his children had. So this is what just through conversations and hardships, we come to these solutions. Just like on my page, through the ignorance, the name calling, whatever, the triggering conversations we come to some solutions that's sustainable. Mind you, my father was stabbed, shot in the same hood that he provides scholarships for. Okay. That he built parks for. Like, so so it's, a, it's a deeper thing to this, but I just, I just don't want people just to um, come to my page because they heard about, yo, King is, he's lit, he's spicy, he likes to, but I want you to dig deeper, right? I want you to dig deeper because through chaos, we have to go through this. Through chaos right. comes to peace, you know what I mean? So. Okay, hold on a second. So I feel like I feel like we just had like a, a, a Nardwar and Jay Z moment. I, I don't oh, know. If, wow, wow, yeah. you're familiar with that. You're familiar yeah. with that. So when yeah. uh, Jay Z was being interviewed by um, this guy out of Canada, and he was like, you know, who is Jay Z? And the Jay Z hitting with the um, the philosophical kind of like response. So I feel like that's the right. moment we just had. So I appreciate you kind of like elaborating and going deep, but just mm -hmm. at a at a very surface level, like I mean, we two brothers just connected. Like, right. like who, just who are you as a brother? Like, I, maybe, maybe I, I, I think I kind of like tossed you a curveball by saying conversations with King because that's right. the name of your platform. So right. I should be asking you, who is King? Is is King Hermer, Her, Hermeko? Hermeko. Was, King Homeku. Home King Homeku. Home so, uh, so say yeah. that for me again. Homeku. Homeku. Yes. Okay, so who is King? Who is King well, Homeku? Give me, give me well, that guy. Who's that brother? Um, Maui. My real name is Maui. They call me Mo. It depends on who you ask me, Mo Cheddar. You know, mm -hmm. funny. Depending what like part of my life I was in, you get different names. Um, but it still comes back to King. And um, me, I'm just a, an, a man that that has purpose. A man that loves cultural capital. That loves to learn. I love to learn. To be the best teacher, you have to be the best learner. So I love to learn. I love to converse about things, everything, every anything. Um, but I'm also a man that is very strategic in everything I do. Um, it might look chaotic to everyone else, but to me, it's already thought of, thought about. I'm a man about with divine purpose. Um, I'm a man that believes that determination and will gets me everything in life. Um, for me to even have three degrees and my GPA was a 1.667 in undergrad, that tells you something. You did a lot of you partying know? in undergrad. I did, man, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Kappa. Um, and so, you know, you know, and it's, it's a duality. Mm -hmm. King has a duality. King could be a Kappa, but he also could be a part of the other thing. Mm -hmm. You would never know, right? Mm -hmm. It's two sides. So when I throw that up, you don't know what I mean. Mm -hmm. I have two sides to me. I have one that's for rebuilding. Uh, community and there's the other side there's an the ignorant side that, that 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 comes out at times as well um but what as an adult as a 40 41 year old adult who's not married who doesn't have children but wants the legacy now it's time to step into the role of a builder mm. of a builder and then this is why i'm so happy to have this channel and i'm blessed that i'm even on your page to express who i am and make sure they get the right narrative make sure i'm not censored Make sure my truth is out. Whether they want to accept it, cool. If they don't, it's all right. Yeah, bro. I listen, you 
you, you you're not gonna be censored here, man. We we just oh, have real. I'm a real person. I like to connect with um real people. You mentioned that your family is um from 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 Ghana and they migrate here for for school. I believe there's a quote from uh, Kwame Nkrumah where he says, mm-hmm. "You don't you don't you don't judge a man based upon where he is in life, but how far he had to travel to get there, right?" right? So before we kind of like got on, we were just talking in the green room about some of your travels and your experiences as a man, right? The things that have shaped you and you talked about, you know, prison, right? Right. A mistake that you made has shaped, you talk about duality, right? You know, you at Columbia university, but you've also, you know, had to spend time in the fed. So you you want, you want to talk about that? Absolutely. Um, Duality, uh, the same school that I got my second master's from was also the reason why I ended up doing time in the feds. Um, I ran for city council in my district because, I'm, like I said, I'm, I love Brown. So, so everything I do is to was a, to shift the paradigm. And the only way to do that is to put myself in positions of power. So I ran for office. Uh, but six years before that, I attended Columbia University. After I ran for office and I lost the race to the incumbent, the feds came and got me for stealing close to uh, being a part of an indictment of stealing close to millions of dollars from this school. Um, it was very shameful um, because I come from good parents. I didn't have to do this, right? But the greed, the lifestyle of going to strip clubs, busting up, traveling to around the world, to like 50 countries, traveling the world because I just wanted to experience life for what it really was. Um, it, to me, it was, it was something that, you know, was shameful, but also I don't regret it in the fact that without it, I wouldn't be able to have the cultural capital to go to Egypt, to go to Ghana, to go to Marrakech, to go to um, uh, Russia to see my first ballet, you know, to go to, Cy- to go to Cyprus, you know, to see my first opera in La Scala in Italy, like certain things, certain things that, you know, I would have missed out on if I didn't um, do what was considered negative. Um, but, you know, I don't promote that for people because the, the sentence I got was light compared to what I should have have gotten. Because yeah. I did so much work for the community, the judge, she knew I wasn't a criminal. Let me let me but, let me ask you a question. I, uh, when I was an undergrad, I, I spent a lot of time around a lot of New York. Well, I went people. to BC undergrad, by the way, Boston okay. College undergrad. Okay. okay, so okay, so you you've been at some pedi- pedigreed institutions. So, right. so, okay, the grace, right. of God. the grace of God. Okay, so I, I spent some time around a few New York dudes um, and and undergrad, and I'm from I'm from North Philly, right? I'm from the poorest zip code in the city. North Philly is real. Yeah, North, North Philly. Philly. <laughs> North Philly so, is real. So, so so North Philly and Brooklyn, right? Brownsville, right? Very similar. An environment. A lot of the men, a lot of the brothers, are very similar in constitution. But but when I when I when I watch your kind of like persona, like online, there's parts of it that come off a bit like braggadocious, like very Harlem, like right. so. I, you know, that's funny. That's funny. Has, as you said, has that, yeah. that has that always been you? Like like let let's speak to that for a little bit because I know for some men to be put uh you know put off by that. Like I was watching the piece where you were talking about. Show me your cologne, and it's going to tell me kind of like right, 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 who you right, had right, as a man. Right. So go right, to, right. break that down for me. What, 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 no, what so, does that energy come from? So, so that energy, that energy, um, you're funny that you said it. That means you really do have a good, you really do got a good, um, you got a good intake on New York dudes for you to decipher like the different boroughs of communities act a certain way. And North Philly, I have a lot of uh, brethren, a lot of Muslims out there in North Philly. And North Philly is one of the realest places ever. Um, for you to come with your mentality, that's that says something. But um, that day, that particular day, I was on a show with Lauren, Melissa, and Lucky. Lauren, Melissa, and Lucky. And Lucky. He, and he was, was talking your shit. I was, was talking my thing just 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 because because it it was it was an over exaggerated uh, persona of why men feel it that it's embarrassing to take care of their woman or to provide for a woman, and it makes them look like simps. And so I had to get into the side of me that used to really go hard and say, listen, if you, I like you, so I'm going to show you, right? Um, and I said, and I said, but do it within your means. And remember, there's levels to it. And the guy that I was going back and forth with, he ended up literally dropping like $800 in super chats on them. And then we had, and then the next day he came and gave me 50 and said, I respect you, brother, on my page. And 
and he got it. It took him a while to get off his ego, but he got it. Whereas that I said, me and you were going back and forth about ego, just like I used to do in a strip club. We used to go back and forth. Who could spend a thousand, two thousand, ten thousand for girls, and they go home to their husbands or their boyfriends. Bro, we that's lose. when I when when I was looking at it, I'm like, yo. I don't know why this brother let you bait him into getting into like a dick measuring match because now he's dropping all these hundreds of dollars to, right. to to prove something, and I'm like, bro, like y- you financing a stream tonight because you right spending all this money because you you and your ego and you trying to uh, protect and project who you are. So in order to prove or validate who you are, now you you know. Right. And every time, and every time he dropped it, Lauren hit the button. You know, cash me pussy wet. Shout out to Lauren. Shout out to Melissa. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Melissa, lucky, but um, one thing I have to say that that was the um, that was a social experiment because mm-hmm. deep in the core, I'm a culture anthropologist, so I like doing things like that. Let people know it's ego that drives men to do things to to spoil women and financially show off in front of women. And guess who only benefits the woman. Exactly. Right. I mean, you saw that recently with the young brother um, out of Atlanta, little baby spends a hundred grand on Sweetie. Allegedly, 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 right? Allegedly, allegedly. spends a hundred right. grand on Sweetie so he can get at Quavo, and I'm like, just, right. it's crazy. But go, I'm, I'm, I don't mean to cut you off. Quavo. I know, no, it, and, and it's crazy, but that's the that's the game people on on, on those economic uh, levels play on, right? Mm-hmm. Where it doesn't really matter, right? Then you got some men that sh- that use you got to use what what's that favorite he uh, shake what your mama gave you mm-hmm. <laughs> you got to you got to use what you got to get what you want right mm-hmm. and because they might not have anything else outside of money that's their tool right and then because eventually like I said before you can have all the money in the world but you don't have access and access is more important than money money is a tool to get access right so. Like I said, it was this bad quartet far. It's only like a hundred and change, but it's limited. So it's so hard to get, right? It's so hard to get, but it's only a hundred dollars, a hundred and change, hundred plus, depending on what size, but it's limited. So it, you can have all the money in the world, but you might not get it. Even the Birkin bag, the real Birkin bag, not what these other people are playing with. You have to have, you have to have spent a certain amount of money with Hermes before you can even get those bags. You just can't walk in and buy those bags. It's the access. And 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 I, and I wanted men to see that you can have all the money in the world, but you still might not have access to a certain type of woman. You won't. Even if you lead with money, you might not get that woman with money because it's not about that. Uh, I mentioned um, Prophet Muhammad, and I'm not Muslim, but most of my friends are. His first wife, Khadija, was richer than him, but he had access to her because of his spirituality. Mm. You know, so... One of the things I was trying to show in that thing is like, okay, you 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 got money, but what type of colognes do you have? What access do you have to that? What type? Where, where you where do you travel to? Like, what type of access do you have? Because your access determines it shows it's 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 indicative of the options you have. Mm. Right. When you have access, certain access, that means it increases your options. Right. You can have all the money in the world. Like I used to go back and forth with that other network, the guy, and the other network. And what happens is I said the word options and he took it to, he took offense to it. And I wasn't talking about his wife. I'm just saying that you you can have all this alleged money you have, but you don't have access. You can have all the money in the world, but you can't get acceptance to certain schools. You, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, you can have yeah. all the money in the world, but you can't come to certain rooms that, where they make decisions. It's mm-hmm. about access and your access shows the options you have. And the more options you have, the more powerful you are. And this is why people really don't have access. Racism begins with, it's a power structure that deals with access. And because we have a lack of access and unity, we don't have options. Bro, hold on one second. You're giving it up. You're giving it up. See, I, 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 I got, I got to take you back to Mo Better so I can start getting the it. Mochetta. Mochetta. I got, I got to take you back to Mochetta so I can start getting it out. So let me, let me ask you this, brother, because you're, you're a man who seems to have um, clearly have, you have the gift of gab. You can speak. Communication will take you far, but you also okay. seem to have um, a skill set for organizing and inspiring the people. So, I guess the question that I have. Um, you said you uh, 
gave a council run or a political run mm-hmm. uh, for Brooklyn. So I, I, I imagine there were a lot of people who like supported you in that endeavor. Um, when the situation came out with, um, you know, your imprisonment, did those folks like feel like let down? Like what was the like, how how were you received? And I'm, and I'm asking you this to say now that you're on the other side of that, do you feel like you owe a debt to your community or that you have something to prove to get back your name? Um, I don't owe a debt to them because I've been I, I, me and my family giving giving up for Brownsville, Brooklyn for the longest. We don't owe them mm-hmm. anything. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but it is it's, it's, it's an honor to have them a part of my purpose, that community. Um, but I love from a distance. Like I said, when I love from a distance, that means all the money that we make goes to the community. But me physically, I don't go there as much as I want to because just generational poverty is a sickness. It's a mental health sickness. Do you know how 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 hard it is to love someone that doesn't that hasn't loved themselves and they parent didn't love themselves and they parent parent didn't love themselves? It's it's hard. It's hard. And 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 right now I'm not there anymore like I used to be mentally. Financially I am. Financially <laughs> they can have every dollar, right? Um, not every dollar because I got to survive, but they can have every dollar and they can have a piece of me. But to really save your community, we have to be 100% immersed in it. And it's hard because of survival. A lot of think individuals we're trying to save are medicated now. They're on drugs. So sometimes they, they could kill you and then it, five, year, five years into their life imprisonment, they're like, oh my God, what did I do? You understand? I do. You see, you see me me going to prison, me going to prison at uh, 39 years old, 40, um, it's like a white boy going to prison after he did something with the stock exchange or white collar crime because you already have all the resources and network already. You have your degrees already. So me coming back, it was easy for me to acclimate, get acclimated. But imagine putting a 16, 17, 18 year old kid into prison what resources, what network does he have to come back to when he gets released? Mm-hmm. Nothing. This is all by design. This is all by design. It was for me to go get incarcerated to see, to see my brothers in a different light and realize the reason why I had an easy time in, in, in the feds because my whole neighborhood was had an incarcerated mentality. So it was like, oh, this thing, I, I did this when I was, okay. It's, it, was, it was easy for me to adapt. That's, and I was causing a lot of trouble. I was causing a lot of trouble with a friend. Mm-hmm. I was always causing trouble, but it's just what it is. Yeah. Know? That's crazy though when you when you speak about that, how natural the, the transition is, because it's like street culture is really prison culture. It, like that's what it is. I remember I was telling I was um telling my wife because uh we was watching a TikTok and it was like this little young teenager who was talking about Philly slang, and he was saying shit. I mean, not pardon the language, but he was saying things like um the word turkey, right? Like right, 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 I'm right. like, well, I was explaining it because my wife's from New York, she's from Queens. Oh, so, uh, south uh, side, we outside. Yeah, yeah. so I, I was explaining to her, well, like that that's a word to come out of prison, but young generation today don't know like come out of prison. Same thing with like in my bag, right? Like you mm-hmm. might hear that, but that's you know, dudes go to prison and they bring home language because dudes from previous generations hold on to, like the language is like it's almost like a vault so you right. go up there you pick up game you pick up information you pick up a new lexicon and then you bring it back and you think it's new so but i, I it's just interesting to hear you say like how natural that transition is like the mind right. state our mind state is really mm-hmm. incarcerated man so um I, my, my next question is this i had a sister on my channel yesterday melanie king interviewing her her interview will be out probably right. next week but um I asked her what was her, her her longest friendship. She was she's forty years old, and yeah, I, I gather you're older than forty. I'm not going to ask you how old, but forty one. Forty one. Okay. So 41. so what, what, what's your longest for, friendship as a forty one year old man? Wow, my it's funny. He's getting married in, in Nigeria soon. I can't make it because I'm on probation. Mm-hmm. Um, his name is Alameda. He's a, he's been a military a career military man. We mm-hmm. met in, uh, each other in kindergarten. We had a fight, and we've been friends ever since. <laughs> That'd be the best friendships. I, I, I tell my wife, ev- everybody who's my day one, like I've had mm-hmm. a fist fight with. Like, like there's, there's nobody on this side of the wall that I haven't had a fist fight right. with. 
I'm saying so. And, that, I, and, I, and, I, and right now, I, my boy would knock me out, knock me cold out, right? Yeah. So thank God we had to fight when he was in kindergarten. He'll 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 knock me out for real. But you know, um, we always been friends. After that, that's my best friend. Um, I have several other friends that I've met. So let's 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 stay on Al- Alameda because my question yeah. is around around Alameda. If Alameda had to give me three words to describe King, what what would those yeah. three words be? Alameda, I don't know. Alameda probably tell you like, I don't know how he does it. Resilient. He doesn't know how. Like I, I find a way. I find a way. Um. Um. Like you said, he probably said, "Gift the gab." away with the ladies you know i don't think so um and he'll definitely say um i love a, a love of life mm. a love of life okay definitely say that all right so you are a lover of life um, one one of the things that most men love in life is is women you know uh-huh. the women accentuate our experience in life so you're mm-hmm. talking about building and legacy right. building now right. me I, I i'll be married for 10 years coming up in august congratulations man I, I appreciate that that's the only institution i respect man so this is a question that i have for you because i don't right. i don't know what it's like out there there's a different world come, there's different technologies is different don't social come outside, media man. so so, so as, your wife, man. as as a 41 year old man that mm-hmm. is dating mm-hmm. I think I might have heard you say that you're you're also I don't know if you're interested in polygamy, but like wh- what's it like? What is it like out there? Like what's what's your strategy? How are you? How do you meet women at that age? Like what right. like are you looking for sisters in their twenties? Like what's how, how does this work for you? What what you know was different for me because um I have a, a way of a different way of thinking. I don't I think and I, I wrote in my book, not no shameless plug, love and life guys are trying to we're gonna get to that. We're gonna get to it. Yeah, but but the it's, it's um, love and marriage are not synonymous, mm-hmm. but they can coexist. So the way I look at it is that, you know, I've been a lover all my life. I've been romantic. I've been taking women to uh, romantic excursions and escapades around the world, um, trying to make, trying to feel a level of passion that is rare. A level, a level of of intense intimacy that is that is rare nowadays. Um, but now I'm at the stage, like you said, building a legacy, generational wealth, and so now I'm looking for someone to marry, and that's a process. Um, because you can love someone, but you they they won't they're not suitable for you to marry. You can marry someone that you don't love because they're a great friend and a great partner. Mm. Love to me is very individualistic, and I've been having fun in this world. We're going out. I could go out meet somebody. I could go on dating dating online. I could meet someone, sleep with anybody. It doesn't matter. But when you deal with marriage, that's a communal thing, right? When you marry someone, it's it's a unification of families. When you're in love with someone, it's just you two, right? This is why marriage to me is the illest institution, like the best institution in the world. My parents are married for close to fifty years. My parents. I respect it. There's Same no right. man in my household that ha- that has had a baby out of retlock. Mm. I'm 41. And I'm telling you, I sleep with women, but I don't have babies. I, I will not have a baby out of marriage. Not going to work. You never know. Somebody might come from different countries. I got, but I don't have a baby. <laughs> I don't have a baby out of uh, wetlock. Um, and because I believe in that family structure, I believe in in, in the fact that it is through family. Is family is the pipeline that values goes through. Yeah. Right. Family is the structure that you this is the only way you can send values to the next generation. Um, if that's why the, the black community is broken, because we have broken families. When you have a broken family, you have a broken community. When you have a broken community, you have a broken nation. Mm. It's really that simple. Mm-hmm. It's family is the strongest unit. So me, the dating thing right now is fun, but it's not purposeful. I'm having a whole bunch of fun. I just came from the Give Young concert last night. I'm having fun, but I'm not. I, 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 now it's time for me to live in my purpose, and the only way to live in my purpose is to create, to cultivate. So are you? Do. 
Let me, let me ask you the question. Are you looking for, for one mate or multiple mates to, to be in a part of that institution for you, that family institution? Well, it's, it's many, it's, 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 it's weird because I would love, it's, it's, it's human to be polygamous. Mm -hmm. That's human. We mm -hmm. can love, you can love as many women as you want, mm -hmm. but you're going to be loyal to one. You can mm -hmm. only be loyal to one because at some point you got to pick one over the other, right? If they all get sick, who are you going to run to first? Right? If they all need something, if you have one dial left and one need, who you see the problem is people want people want to do things and have multiple women, but they can't even pour into one. The only time a man should have multiple women when you when the cup of that first one is overflowing. So when you take from her, it doesn't hurt her. But that's hard to do. That takes a special type of man. Um me right now, because of my parent, I would like to have one woman. I would like to have one woman that likes to have fun with other women, but that might not happen, right? That's why I love, but because I'm a militant, disciplined type of person, if I have to choose being with one woman, I will, because that's what my family requires. But what what I want to do is not is not necessarily what I what I need to do, mm. and I know the difference between love and marriage. So I what are difference. in terms of a potential um a mate? If there's a lady out there who wants to dive into your DMs after she sees this interview, like what are what what are the uh, three characteristics that are a must have for you to take right. her serious and what's a, what are uh, the top red flags where it's like, absolutely no. The three must have, she has to, she has to, she has to love life. I mean, laughter, fun, enjoy the moment. She has to be funny. That's the, you gotta love life with me because life is already stressful already. You gotta love life. Two, she has to be, uh, resourceful you have to be resourceful as a woman whatever i bring to the table that hopefully you can multiply or whatever, whatever's going on you are able to find solutions you're not just sitting there right and three because of my vanity you have to be attractive to me because i do you have to i want to enjoy the years of our youth together i understand gravity happens as you get older but while we're here let's enjoy my i love women who are older but look younger that's one of the things I love. I love a woman that's preserved. You went through all that and you still look amazing. That's the woman I love. Um, I, I tend not to deal with younger women. You know, they try to, they come for me a lot, um, like in their 20s. But I would prefer an older woman um, that looks youthful. But the problem with that, most of these older women um, might have children already. And I don't mind children, but I don't know if my ego can handle what comes with children, which is mm. another man that might not be happy with that situation. I don't know if I could handle that. You know, I'm still, cause I'm getting a lot of pretty women, but they have children, but it's like, damn, how can I handle that? Like, how can I come into a, a family and become a blended family? That's a little bit difficult for me right now. So I'm still navigating that. Well, you, you talk a lot about legacy. Do you feel like children are a big part of legacy for you? Absolutely. I, that's the only reason why that's the only reason why I want to get married. Oh, so I'm asking you that because you, your preference seems to be an older woman. But biologically, you know, if you're in you know, your early 40s, mm -hmm. the child rearing would probably be difficult for it's extremely difficult. So I, that's why I said that's why I said my what I what I prefer is not what I'm, I'm, I'm going to choose. OK, that's my preference, but that's not what I'm going to choose. Right. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, an old woman that looks like a Nicole Murphy type, right? But I can't have kids with her. Okay. Right? But that's what I prefer because I learned the best things in life from older women. I like I was schooled about culture through older women. Mm -hmm. Younger women, they want to be taught by me, and that's cool. I could do that too, right? But you're, a, you're, a, you're, you're a student. You like to learn. I love to learn. I got I it. I love to learn. I, I actually, I'm a teacher, and the best a teacher is to, uh, to be a teacher. You have to be a great student, mm. right? Um, but it seems like right now I got to do with a younger woman, and I don't mind that. But you got some younger women that's mature and stuff like that. But the younger woman today, how, how they say yesterday's wife is not today's wife. Like <laughs> it's not. It's not the same. It's not the same, brother. It's not. It's really not the same. So that's why I'm like, uh, like yesterday when I went to the Give Yon concert, I saw all these beautiful young women. But it's not the same. I feel you. It's not the same. It's different. It's to the point like, yo, you're 25. I'm old enough to be like, I'm good. 
I'm, I can't. You know, I just can't. I, I don't know. What about in terms of uh, the the quality, right? You hear a lot um, within the, the the black manosphere today about the, the modern uh, woman and mm-hmm. the difficulty in terms of of dealing with them because they've been raised to feel as though they don't need men or marriage or you know they're mm-hmm. independent and some of them are very difficult to work with. Like right. there's also been this whole. You know, I was speaking with the sister yesterday. I said wedding season has been replaced with hot girl summer. So yeah. you have this this kind of like thought culture that's very pervasive. Like like how does that impact the the women that you're selecting from? I mean, that's our fault as men. That's our fault. Mm-hmm. It's our fault. Women have uh the independence of women have increased because the 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 the, the inconsistency of men. Mm. Right? The more they become more independent because we became less dependable. Mm. So I'm not mad at that. That's the result of us not being consistent with our women. That's not that's the result of us not being dependable. So they're going to do on their own and they're going for what can you give me now? Or I don't want to talk to you because I don't want you string me on for five or seven years and, and not doing nothing for me like you did to my mother and my aunt and my cousin. You're not going to do that to me. That's the generation we have right now. You're not going to do that. Give me what I want. I know it's a it's a Chanel bag. It's only five thousand. I need that though because you're not going to leave me stranded like you did my mother, my aunt, my cousin, or my friend. Interesting. So that's what that's what we created. That's what we created because we're not dependable. We're not consistent. We're not stern. We're, we men are becoming more nasty. We don't exercise grace. Right. I'm from a, I'm from a a, a, a place where. Even the biggest gangster murder murder would be like, yo, I gotta get home. My wife is gonna kill me. I'm like, hold yeah. on, you just caught seven bodies. You just caught seven bodies yesterday. Would you wanna run home because your wife is gonna kill you? It's a certain type of level of respect that real men have for women because they bring balance to their life. Mm-hmm. I don't care how much how much gangster, how much a warrior, how much a lion you are, there's a woman that you 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 humble yourself to because she brings peace. And we, and, and, we, and we are not vetting our men to do that, and we're not vetting our young ladies to accept that. Yeah. So it's our fault. So the, the young women today, yes, they're on thought season, but you got to ask why they're on thought season. Why do they have an insatiable hunger for materialism? Why? Why? Because we, don't have, cause we, haven't, we haven't done anything to let them know there's a different value system. It's a different type of value system. Why you think now all these girls that are doctors and lawyers and bankers, they still smashing the thug. They still smash the gangster on the low. So money really ain't what they want. They want leadership. But by the time they realize what leadership is, they 37, 38, 40. Hold on one second, bro. I'm 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 really I'm really enjoying enjoying this build. You know what I mean. I, I never judge a book, you know, by by its cover. You you have a you have a lot to offer. You've distilled a lot of of wisdom from your travels. Um, I know a big part of that during your um incarceration, you, you wrote a book. Um, you care mm-hmm. to show you know, show the folks that and yeah, tell I'm them. I did it a little too early. This is uh. Love and life to rise and travel. I remember TLA was uh, making fun of it and a couple of people because it's, it's small in size. But this book, I wrote it in the midst of being incarcerated um, where you didn't have a typewriter, you didn't have a computer, you had to write it and then you had to email it. And then you had to have a friend outside in the outside world type it up for you. Then you had to send you back and then, then they would mail you a copy of it, but the, the COs would take it and you wouldn't get it. So you had to write it again. So I did this under pressure, and because it's under pressure, it's a diamond, and it's a Bible of relationships. It's the Rosetta Stone of romance because it's a book about sixty that contains sixty affirmations and talks about a certain places I went to with certain women, and how I had to learn what love was. Like I'm learning what marriage is because I knew that through my parents, I knew partnership, but I never knew what love was. I knew what duty is. Marriage is a duty. No matter how you feel about your wife, you gotta make sure she's okay. That's a duty, but I didn't know what love was. And it took me to travel to close to 50 countries to find out what love was. And now I'm realizing the more I get older, it's not like marriage, but I'm praying that I could find someone I could share both with. Mm. 
And can I do it in time before my parents pass away so they could see their grandchild? So it's a, it's a whole bunch of things that's going on, so many moving pieces. And I put them in this book. And it's a real story, it's authentic. Everything is authentic. So far, I changed the names of the ladies because you know I don't want to disrespect them. And I, and I also modified a few endings because we don't want to promote toxicity uh, within love and intimacy. We don't want to promote that. You know, they know what it was. Hold on, bro. That's 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 super dope, and I'm, I'm I really am hoping that you've yeah you know, I know you said you under under pressure you wrote the book under pressure but I imagine your parents been being together for almost fifty years that they they're getting up there as well so you might be under pressure to kind of like get, right. that, get that thing going you know what I'm saying but um man you understand because you know as marriage vet and my parents got to meet them I already know bro that's the that's the vetting thing so if I don't have my my uh, my father the co-sign or my mother the co-sign, then you don't know what type of decision I'm going to be making. Let, let me ask you a question, because um, yeah. I, I want to start to to get into the content, right? I, I think I, I have a, a, a good a good solid understanding, you know, as much as we can get within the constraints of an interview, you know, in terms of you know who you are as King. But I want to talk a little bit about King, the content creator. So you, you're you're creating content now. Of course, I subscribe to your channel. I'm always going to thank support. you. Um, no doubt, no doubt. But um, why? Let, let me ask you this: You're doing conversational panel style content, but within the manosphere, and I don't think that you you, you don't even you don't say you're in the manosphere. But there are early on, the manosphere consisted of two types of men. Right. There were men who were seeking refuge because they were rejected, hurt, right, poisoned right. by by a woman and they were seeking a place where they could nurture their their wounds right it became a place for trauma bonding right so but then there were there were men who came to the space because they wanted to learn from other men mm-hmm. about the nature of women and how they mm-hmm. could be more successful and their outcomes in terms of trying to connect with women, right? And you seem to be someone who has a lot of insight and knowledge around women. And you have all these men out here who are offering like alpha male content and how to do this and pick up artists. And for me, a lot of that content is fake. Um, it's It has some toxic undertones. And then a lot of the dudes who are putting it out, I don't really believe them. <laughs> Like they just don't seem they just don't seem believable to right, me. Right, right. You know what I mean? But you you seem to like why why have you have you given any thought to perhaps creating a channel or a segment where you can build an audience talking to those young men to, to offer them a healthy perspective on how to engage with women um better well, than what you, they're presently now, being presented? Now you now you gave me an idea because I you know I was just trying to have conversations. I don't want to seem like uh, 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 you know, a lecturer, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but now you gave me, maybe I might do that because it's funny, I had a I had a uh, conversation with one of my homeboys this today before I called you, mm-hmm. called in for you. Um, he's a doctor and he, we, he went to, he, one time he came to New York to visit me and, and I, he said, you know, we are the men that women are looking for and, and we don't get mad when we don't get the woman we want, we just move on and we're respectful. We're not we're not disrespectful to women because we're not getting what we want or we don't have the life we want. And there needs to be men out there if we want to make this paradigm shift and not destroy the manosphere, but let people know there's other parts of the manosphere that exist that's not disrespectful, that's not filled with hate and toxicity. And and that's and, and I think maybe that's what I need to do more how to engage in women um, in my own way, right? And, and, but I don't want to seem like a person that, that's given advice and never got married. That's another thing. That's why I, mean, I, I talk about Kevin, wrong. I Kevin talk about Samuels is, is yeah, that's, that's, so, yeah. yeah. I'm just saying it like, it, like it does, you, you being married doesn't necessarily, that isn't a prerequisite for you giving advice for how to, you know, be with a woman yeah. and tell with a woman. So that's not a oh, oh, no, Yeah, I'm going to lead to that because he's not married, but, you know, it's my frat brother, so I don't want to disrespect him, but you're absolutely right. He had two failed marriages, uh, of one, and, and look where he's at. Mm-hmm. Me, I never thought about, like, that's why I only talk about romance and love, right? I talk about intimacy because I actually went to school for that. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but maybe I, I should consider doing that because we are not doing what we need to do to pour into our woman. Every time we leave a relationship, they left with less than they came in with, and that's completely wrong. Yeah, don't get me wrong. There's women out there that probably say, "I hate King, I hate Mo, I hate him," but when you look at the scoreboard, you you see, damn, you don't hate him. You hate that you're not with him because you left with more than you came in with. And yeah. I'm not talking about physical, right? And that's and that's the thing. We need to have a woman always going to be mad if we're not with them, but we need to make sure that we pour into them. No doubt. And you and, and dating, if you're gonna have fun out here, you can still pour into women. You don't have to be like leave on a bad note and be a taker and be a a, a conqueror or you know, we don't have to do all that. You can still have fun, but you can still make them feel more. Bro, make them feel abundant. The the manosphere, when I look at it, it, it it's like a universe. Like the, the it's like how the universe is always expanding, mm -hmm. right? The manosphere mm -hmm. is always expanding, and there's always new stars being born, right? There's different celestial bodies. There's different constellations. <laughs> so, I just think that um, there's an opportunity for for evolution, and mm -hmm. the only way we evolve is by bringing new blood, new energy, mm -hmm. new perspectives into the space. Like I represent one of those new perspectives. You, you're not going to, so. you know, many Pan-African grassroots streets, corporate America, college, like the, you're not going to find no. that combination. You know what I mean? No, so not. I'm you're here, not. but we need, we need more brothers who can offer that alternative. And I think that you have that to offer. So well, maybe we got to work on something and maybe we do that. Maybe I, I'll give you that, you know, because I really want, I, I, I really want our brothers to really, Fall back, man. Fall back and look at what you're doing. Look how you're moving. And and, and, and I'm not saying destroy your ego because you need ego. I'm just saying check it for a little bit. Yeah. You know, you don't you don't have to get mad because you don't get what you want. Right? What you do, what you can do, you can learn how to adjust. And you can or, or you can learn how to read the universe and say, you know what, I didn't get that person because and know that that because might come five years later. You don't know because because it doesn't have to happen now. Oh, I went through that because five years later, years later, like, oh, wow, that's why I went through that for. That's why I went to the feds for. Oh, that's why I lost the race. Oh, that's why that girl didn't get with me. But you're going to do that if you're living and you're patient and you're open. Mm. You got to be open and, and ego doesn't make you open. Ego is tunnel vision. It was my ego that helped me get my page monetized in five weeks. But because of that ego, I'm I, I, I was losing I was losing valuable relationships because that's let's, all I saw. Let's 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 start let's right. Let's get into there. that. Yeah, let's get, let's get into that. You, you clearly have a chip on your shoulder. And so let me let me let me let Okay, so <laughs> the, the first time that I saw you, it was on mm -hmm. uh, the, the Lapeef Network, mm -hmm. um, and. I'm, I had heard you were on there before. I didn't catch that episode, but the episode that I saw was the one where you were booted from the platform mm -hmm. and um, the, the the brother who booted you off. In my opinion, I think that he was operating in a very feminine and emotional space like when he, Absolutely. When he did it. And I think Absolutely. that he probably used to being kind of the diva. And I think that your energy probably made him feel a little bit small. And and that this is just my I, I I'm a good judge yeah. of uh I, will, I agree with you yeah you know I, I, I judge you. character I judge you know but it, it is what it is but you got discernment you got good discernment after that then another brother who's associated with that network you know lambasted mm -hmm. your work and belittled it and you know he has a very growing platform almost a hundred thousand people and and kind of like talk down on you as well <laughs> you know right. so I feel like. After that, you came into this space with with a, with a chip on your shoulder. Talk 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 about that, and talk about being monetized in five weeks. That's an incredible feat. So sp speak to that really quickly. Yeah, I, like if you watch the show, you watch me. I really don't know how to do anything on YouTube. I'm like I'm I'm learning. Like my my boy Chef says, I'm learning how who is also the creator of the True Pill uh, mm -hmm. world. Um, I, I'm learning how to, uh, I'm building a plane as it's flying. I'm really mm -hmm. building this plane as it's in the air. Mm -hmm. And 
no production. I'm, I'm going to get stuff like, yeah, like production. I'm going to get it. But I wanted to do a social experiment to let people know just off of content alone, I can accomplish everything you're doing. Right. And that was, that was a shot at that network. Mm-hmm. I don't need all of that. That's, I don't need all those effects and all that. I'm going to get it off of the strength of will. And I had to prove a point and I did. And I don't, if you tell me how I did it, I don't know. But I know we did 31 days straight of four to five hours live stream every day mm-hmm. for 31 days straight. And then the, 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 uh, the fifth week, we made our goal. I wanted to do it in a month and then do it in five weeks. And it was basically consistency and real content. And I, I had the full point to TLA. I had a full point to Lapif. I had a full point to Anton. And I would give props to the, the that network because I did get my first big look from them. Mm-hmm. So I'm never going to take that away. But we know idols become viral rivals when they when you realize they're not who you think they were. Yeah. And I saw I started seeing it to the point that late September I started a YouTube page. I said something's going to happen. And literally next week, when I was supposed to sign a contract and be on the show. That, transpi- that transpired and through my intuition and streets, streets, smarts are savvy. You know, you feel something right and it wasn't. And no disrespect to them, um, you know, but disrespect to them. You know what I mean? No disrespect, yeah. but disrespect to them because at the end of the day, it's wartime, but it's just sad because we, we are two of the same melanin. Um, and I don't want to, you know, I want them, they, 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 they're good already. But my thing is, can we all be good? Let me I ask you. A, mm-hmm. Let me ask you this. Um, and I'm, my producer is going to hate that I cut you off because you. I felt like you, you, you were building up, and he's going to like, Yo, why are you always cutting people off? And like, so my my bad in advance. All right, no, so no, no, um, I like it. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah. So um, four to five hours a day live streaming is not mm-hmm. s- sustainable. But like you said, you're you know you're building the plane. Um, you know, at, mm-hmm. as it's going. My question that I have for you is, um, you know, I grew up doing competitive sports. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I've gotten to gotten into fights with some of my some of my closest friends now. Mm-hmm. E- even when I make the judgment about the the brother and say that he was in his feminine or emotional energy, which, in my opinion, you know, mm-hmm. if I had to assess that moment, that's the way that I read it. Mm-hmm. At the same time, though, it's nothing personal, right? Not right. Personal. So I think that. I think that sometimes we as black men is very easy for us to lock horns on the competition Mm -hmm. and forget about the bigger picture in terms of is there, is there benefit in just letting bygones be bygones. And, and as we go into 2022 and we think about the fact that this space is growing. So instead of being kind of like locked in confrontation or competition Mm -hmm. or war with Mm -hmm. them, saying you know what i'm even down to do a collab just let let it be let's all grow it's enough out here for all of right. us to eat as black men the space grows yeah. and we all grow like is could do you, do you see that as a possibility down the road or do you or is that chip is that chip like a cement block right now that's on your show <laughs> well you know we have to have a conversation first right mm-hmm. and we have to have an unbiased conversation right and after we have that conversation we can't be doing anything passive aggressive after the fact see a lot of times people would say okay we cool it's good but they still behind the scenes doing certain things to stop your growth so then when you're doing that you're stopping my money now my now you're stopping my money now now it's personal right and and i know it's not a lot of money but just the principle of it you see me growing um we as men especially particularly black men should let bygones be bygones this is youtube none of us are going to kill each other they're going to make all the threats they want People can say whatever they want, but I know who I am. I know how I give it up. And I'm on probation, so I'm very wise in the words. I say I don't want any problems with anybody. I don't start anything with anybody. However, we need to have a conversation, and people need to put egos aside and say, you know what? That happened. Now what next? What are we doing? What are we going to do? It happened. What are we going to do? And But we can't coexist. It's not because that side is a bad or bad people. We have different school of thoughts. No doubt. That's why we can't coexist. It's not because I'm ignorant and they're ignorant or they're smart and I'm trying to prove I'm let me, let me no. push back. Let me let me push back on that. Right. 
because I'm I, I've coined the phrase um, wimp. I say that a lot of men in this space have a wimp psychology. It just means that they have a white identified male perspective. Right. So me as somebody who's African centered, like my way of thinking is diametrically opposed to so many of the men in this space. But I still do believe we can coexist just right. because from from a nationalist perspective. Right. right. Or or even if you look at it from a natural perspective. Right. OK. We're all as men. We're all a part of the same ecosystem. So Absolutely. we're already coexisting. But what's going to be the nature of our coexisting? Does it has to be rooted in conflict? Right. Or can can we kind of like mature the dialogue and just understand, like, listen, man, you had a little bit of friction. But like I said, it's YouTube. If I see you right. today, I'm not going to put blood in your mouth. It's, no, you, it's, not, you, it's, you, like it's YouTube. So, like, how can we still move so that we don't destroy this thing, which is still in its infancy, which is black mm-hmm. men once again having a voice this is the age of the black male content creator so as a new black male content creator we just don't want i don't want us to set the precedent or the paradigm where everybody thinks that beef is our path to to forwarding the discussion because i think that we saw that in the 90s that's when we got the first west coast like the hip-hop got messed up with that so now that we're doing this i don't want to see podcasters and Content creators like yo, I don't. They the ops. They the ops. Like, how, no. why does that have we gotta, to be, we, we gotta be careful. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You 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 hit something. You know the head, but we gotta be careful. Remember, I'm from I'm from New York. One mm-hmm. of my friends who I saw in the feds is is, is facing serious time tax stones because mm-hmm. of what the podcast led to. Mm-hmm. So I know firsthand. It's not. I'm not making this up. I know firsthand. Shout out to tax stone. Free him for shout out to tax stone. Shout out to like Teak Johnson. And um, shout out uh, to uh, what's the brother name? Uh, is it Mc, Mc, Shanduke McFadison? Because his brother, yeah. you know, that's his brother, yes. lost life and, in that. So, shout no, out but to Shan, him Shanduke, well. Shanduke is doing a lot from GMAC, he's doing a lot in Fort Green, too. So, shout mm-hmm. out to him, too. You, you in tune, you mm-hmm. definitely too. Shout out to him, mm-hmm. shout out to the homie. Um, shout out to uh, Brendan Green, my brother, you know, what I mean, black revolutionary, intelligent, militant soldiers. If you mm-hmm. if you get the acronym, then you know what I'm with, you know, what I mean, Absolutely. black revolutionary, intelligent, militant soldiers. So, mm-hmm. shout out to those two people. And shout out to the other two people. So, you know, I want people to understand that these people are doing time or dealing with deaths because people can solve issues mm-hmm. and took it too personal and let their ego come out the way. That's not going to happen with me because I'm not going to put myself in a predicament. I tell people, if you're not happy here, you leave. I'm not going to go into somewhere I don't like t- territory. I'm not doing that. But if I'm there... I'm going to defend myself, and I'm talking about YouTube. I'm not talking about real world. No, no, I got you. Yeah. So, me personally, um, no, we can't. We can't have any uh, collaborations for the simple fact that the YouTube world, if it's considered land, anybody can get a plot of land. The problem is, there's going to be a lot of confrontation because of the times. We're going to be bumping heads because we're doing shows at the same time. We fight for the same niche market unless we move out this th- everybody said there's 300 million youtube pages but why are we still fighting for the same million people okay and that's still it's a scarcity mindset i don't care right. who i'm on right. with at the same time right your audience is going to be your audience and the whole thing i was i was advising somebody yesterday and i said yo i have almost 2000 subscribers on my channel, right. Right. but I don't, I don't assess myself by YouTube. I'm bigger than YouTube. No, you're bigger. You're bigger than YouTube. You're, you know, big, this, you're bigger than YouTube. And so I tell people like it's almost 8 billion people on the planet. Right. You're going to find an audience. YouTube is just one medium, but you're, it's not it's the scarcity mindset will have you. Oh, they right. put their show at the same time as mine. Like, nah, that's, that's crumb behavior. Like we don't, right. We don't right. operate like that. It's an, it's right. a, that's the point I'm trying to make. There is enough out here for, and even with our differences, like I have ideological smoke for folks. I'm all with the intellectual warfare, but mm-hmm. not to the point that it burns the entire ship that we're all on together. And as mm-hmm. black men, we're all on this ship together. Right. But this, and that's the thing, homostasis. We have to let that play out. You can't be the catalyst for peace because peace too soon could lead to even worse war. Mm, hold on. Right. Hold on. Oh, wait, wait. Let that. 
Let that sink in and then repeat it. Go ahead, do that again. Yeah, because it's homostasis that we talk about on my on my channel. You gotta let things come back to equilibrium naturally because peace too soon can lead to a worse war. When when people, you know, you bring two little nothing heads together, like, yo, I ain't beefing no more. No more of this, I don't wanna hear this. And they only say, okay, okay, cause you did. But as soon as you're not there, they're going hard. And they be more calculated because they, they already told you they ain't gonna do anything, right? We need to let it play out. Let it play out. This is written. Let it play out. Because what happens is people worry about this money thing. People want to make the 20, 30, 40,000 a, a month. Let me tell you something. You can have two to three, you got three to 5,000 subscribers and, and make a good living off of this if done properly. You don't need all those. I, I'm going to prove it. Like I proved how you could get that in a month. Mine's out of the month. I'm gonna prove that I only need three to five thousand. I'm cool, and I can live decent. So you you, you said it. It was written. It was I'm written. Gonna, let's go to scripture here. Who, who who are the four horsemen? Oh, well, three now. But the four horsemen and um was me, Chef Sapino, my brethren, Darrell, young young fiery young man. I love him too, and then it was E Black. And they were the first three guys that came onto my first show. They just came on. And I said, you know what? We're the four horsemen. The four horsemen of Armageddon, you have three, four of them. One is conquest. That's me. I saw something. I want to take it over with limited resources, technical resources, meaning I, didn't, I don't know how this, I didn't know how to operate YouTube. I'm learning as I go. Then you have war Darrell, he goes after everybody sometimes he's a little bit over disrespectful sometimes i tell him to i tell him to stop um you know talk my people's wives and whatever mm -hmm. but i can't stop him i can only make a suggestion remember i just met these men these young men yeah so i can and but i get it you know what i mean so if you know someone is, is not playing fair why bother him leave him alone leave that man alone because then Remember, you can't tell somebody how they're going to respond. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to do that. Um, then you have famine. Um, but the famine, you have a balance. You know, you know, famine is considered, not famine, but you know, hunger is considered like a war crime. When I you, know. When you it's a war crime. And that shows the imbalance of, of the world or corruption. And you, you need real balance for that. So we have a uh, chef. He represents balance. He always tries to bring everything to to a real balance in the room because he knows sometimes it's so idealistic, but he knows we need to have those type of ideals or we're gonna really be really messed up as a community. And then you had death and it was E Black, but he's no longer a four horseman. And I respect E Black because I think he needed this. I left two networks and look what I have now. He left me, uh, that Lapeef and then this network. Now he should blossom. But he represented death, meaning that death is completion. Death is not a black, bad thing. For you to ascend to a higher level, you have to complete things. And for him to, you know, I hopefully he takes what we have and take it to another, you know? Um, oh, hold on, hold on. Okay, I got my AirPods on this one right now. All right, do you hear me? Yeah, I hear you loud and clear. You're good. Okay, hello? Yeah, you're good. I hear you loud and clear. Yeah. All right. All right, thank you. So, um, he, 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 he's going, he's, he's a good guy. He just, you know, he uh, went about it the wrong way, in my opinion, but he's a good guy. He's a good guy. Do, am I going to tolerate anything? No. Am I going to bring him back? No. And, and, and am I going to move forward? Yes. Am I going to restructure? It's my, my, my page is only six weeks old. <laughs> I mean, if I'm a, I'm a six week, six weeks old. Do you remember when you was at six weeks? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my my backstory is different though, because I created right. a, I created a page in 2017, but not as a content creator. I was a content consumer. Right, but so I I just started I started content creation on the 30th of August. Right, but do you remember six weeks? Even that. Six yeah, weeks. yeah, 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 yeah. Like six weeks, like like you're an infant, like you like you still you you trying to get it together. You still we, have anxiety. At like, 90 days, we still that. Right. Yeah. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, so when people expect something from me at six weeks, I'm like, damn, 
thank you for believing me like that, but I'm still six weeks old, right? So it's going to change. What you see Conversation Kings now might not be like that a year from now. No doubt. We evolve in evolution, right? And that's what it is. And they got to understand that. They got to understand that. And evolution means sometimes I might have to let go of certain people um, that don't represent what I represent. And what I represent is this. I represent the fact that if you're going to be associated with me, you got to be war ready. Not 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 trained to go. Mm-hmm. I don't want you to be trained to go. I want you to be war ready. Mm-hmm. And when I say war, war ready, I want you to understand that in this YouTube world, you are a pingata. And people get rewarded by how hard they could break you up or how hard they could hit you. And if you're not hard and you let someone break you, you can't take this journey with me. Because if you let Darrell break you by talking about someone you love in your life and he doesn't know that person personally, then you're in trouble. Because you're going to get someone that's worse than Darrell when you're 10,000, 100,000 subscribers. They might even threaten to hurt you or kill you. How are you going to handle that? You're going to tell me to say, block them, cut them off? Ah, no. How are you going to deal with it? How are you going to deal with it? We don't fight for you. We fight with you. How are you going to deal with it? Because what happens is, what type of fight are you? That's why I can't respect the other network, because you had to cut me off, disconnect me to get your point across. So what happens when you go against like a Joe Rogan and you can't cut him off? What happens when you go against someone like that? It'll end your career. It'll it'll end your YouTube career. That's it. You played yourself. Mm -hmm. You played yourself because you didn't stand on your two. Even if you fight somebody and you lose, at least you fought. But when you try to control. A a lot of these dudes think because they got high subscriber counts that, that that means something in punching power or don't. It don't mean nothing because you can you, you, you can know. move you can maneuver behind the scenes and blackball people and say hey don't I don't need to listen I, when I came in I told people I'm like, what kids say I'm stuck with what I'm stuck with because I don't suck right. like I ain't I ain't got <laughs> one of them right, 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 like my shit gonna grow because I'm consistent right. my shit it, I, and pardon me for cursing y'all I I'm relaxed because you got you got Brownsville and North Philly right here so it's kind of right. like it's, it's seeping right. out a little bit because the energies right. are similar so my, my bad it's very similar you're a little bit more dangerous though but. Go ahead. Yeah, no, no it's all love. Uh, listen, bro, we 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 up on an hour. I try not to let these joints go too long because okay. I, I want people to be able to rock with this on a car ride. I dropped right. it on like a 5 30, 6 o'clock on the Friday. So on your commute home, this will get you right for the weekend. That's you can love. Listen, listen to it in your car, right? A good conversation between two brothers. So um I appreciate you coming through. Just and closing, just tell the folks kind of like where they can follow you, anything you got going on, anything you got um, coming up, now's the time you can just drop that and say any closing remarks. Oh, yeah. Thanks, man. Listen, please. Uh, first of all, I want to say I'm grateful for being on your show. You didn't have to do this. I'm mm-hmm. very grateful. And anything you need from me, just let me know. Um, you can go and check me out on Conversations with King. Conversations with a K. Not a C, but with a K. Um, conversations, plural, plural. Conversations with King. I, my show now comes on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 7 we get on there in a panel from like 7.30. Sometimes we go to 11. It used to be from 7 all the way to whenever, every day of the week. Yeah. But we stop now because what happens is we're bringing up other people in our channel. From On the Block with Jen, please go and check her out. Um, also, uh, bring Chef Serpino, Darrell, Hanifa, Mayat, you know, Tawana. Uh, we're bringing a whole bunch of people through the ranks. You know, and I want everybody to understand. I hope if I forget anybody's name, please forgive me. Um, but we bring everybody through the ranks and we got a lot of big surprises. I'm just I just want to make sure the ink dries first. Um and you know, just be on the lookout. Twenty twenty two no, twenty twenty one we will monetize. Twenty twenty two we're gonna make an impact, a profitable impact that's gonna make sure everybody that's aligned with us is taken care of so they can focus on this full time. So please be with us, follow my page, try to get me up to 10,000 subscribers. And so I could do what I, I do best, which is give out uh, conversa- solution-based conversations. Um, other than that, I'm just happy to be here. Go and support the book. It's on every platform. Um, I appreciate what's got the merchandise on Conversation with Kings. Um, but this is a this is a dope, dope uh, platform. Thank you for allowing me to come on here. And, um, you know, 
I really want you to, I really want you to uh, interview certain people because certain people um, got a bad rap within our monster community, and those mm-hmm. certain people are more militant than than we might imagine. And I really want I want I want that to be to, to be known. Everybody yeah. ha- everybody on my channel has a, a, a how can I say an underlying core for the love of the black community, or well, you know we have our we have our off topic panels too. So like I, I, well, just, I don't want to I don't want to bring I don't want to bring certain people because it might get lit. Yeah, well the panels are black only. We li- like okay. we lean we lean we only because we don't invite okay. anybody to cook out. There's a cookout okay. style conversation, but we don't we don't give out we don't <laughs> give out cookout passes. You can, I know I know. You I being black, black is your pass to the cookout. Okay. So okay. okay 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 okay. But I, what I'm saying is when we had the next one, I'll shoot you the casting call, and if there's anybody in your network you want to come, you okay. know. Hit us up. We try to get them on. Right. But when you say black, what do you mean identify as black? You know, African African descendant. African descendant. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you know, it's weird because come... you 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 go, you because I think I think Latinos are certain Latinos are black, but they claim it when they want to. But I think I think it's certain Latinos that are black. But maybe that's that's why. No, I'm I, I agree. I'm a, I'm, I'm a okay. Pan Africanist. So yeah, if, as long as, as if you're African descendant and that's what you. Op, you know, identify as you know you you acknowledge your Africanity, then yeah, you welcome on the platform. Okay, perfect. So she's definitely coming. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, all right. All, all right. right. All right, yo, listen, you man, you 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 cook family. That was today. We had uh, we were joined by conversations with King um, for going off topic. Like I said, you know, we bring on dope content creators from across the spectrum of social media, and we push the culture forward through conversation. So I appreciate y'all tapping in. Peace. Peace. Going off topic. Off topic. You really off topic right now. Yo, you way off topic. How is it that everybody's over here and you way over there off topic?